Artificial intelligence suggests your music on Spotify, your purchases on Amazon, and your news on Facebook, and even your clothes on Stitch Fix. But AI has not been used widely in college courses until now. Joining us now is Anne-Marie Sastry, who's the president and CEO of Amosite, a company using artificial intelligence to deliver college courses online. Such a great pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Absolutely. All right, how are you using AI to advance education? What we do is we deliver courses online. They need to go online. Right now, yeah. college is too expensive and too inaccessible. And we add elements of artificial intelligence to make the experience better. Uh, you notice when you're on Amazon, I'm, I'm sure you're both Prime members, and the suggestions at the bottom are pretty good. That's machine learning. And all businesses ultimately will be AI businesses. But this technology hasn't touched higher education yet. So right now, higher education is confronted with its knowledge workers, its professors, really spending a lot of effort to try to reach students, when in fact some of this could be helped out by algorithms. But universities aren't software companies. We are. So we are working with colleges and universities to help them deliver their materials. And where do they need help the most at this point? We think that general education credits are very important. That is the first stepping stone to getting a college education. And if you look at the statistics of what really empowers people economically, it's finishing that degree. If um, you look at the numbers on who goes to college, 70% of Americans have some experience in higher education, but only 30% have a degree. And of the Americans in higher education, 60% will attend more than one college or university, and many will take no credits with them at all. So transfer credits are an issue, accessibility is an issue, and the first step is getting those general education credits delivered to people. Um, interesting. Over a third of undergraduates in this country mm. work more than 30 hours a week. Wow. Makes it really tough yeah. to finish that first year of college. Wow. Um, is it in the university's best interest, thinking through using artificial intelligence, using online tools to generate more of these classroom type settings and opportunities um, in terms of and opposed to collecting full tuition? Absolutely. Uh, I was a professor myself for 17 years and started a global graduate program and it was online. And online was the only way to reach learners. At that time I was working in vehicle electrification and I started a battery company during that era. And people globally needed to know how to build electric cars, but they couldn't move around the planet to the universities that offered the programs. Universities are confronted with a workforce that needs to be continuously educated and their physical plants are constrained, of course. So if you think about what the pathway is for getting more people into college, is it really doubling the size of college campuses or is it taking faculty and instructors and making them more powerful, powered by artificial intelligence? When you look at what we can do if we have more information on the learners, what we can do to empower them, what we can do to mass customize offerings, uh, we believe that the change will be akin to uh, going to a store versus having Shopify or Amazon. You've had a very um, diverse work background. Uh, you sold your, one of your first companies to Dyson for $90 million. You taught, as you uh, just said, you, you have this new company now, you're an engineer. Um, in terms of accessibility to education, how important is that and, and how can AI help more people get access to education? Education is, we think, a fundamental human right. And uh, our core belief is that this company is built to help people gain an education. There's, there's no question about how important education is. Um, if you look at the wage gap for people who have a university degree or don't have a college degree, it's profound and it's widening. And in fact, the last few years in a row, fewer Americans are finishing their degrees and going to colleges. The number of colleges and universities in the United States is actually, in this richest nation on earth, shrunk. There are about 3,000 in the United States and there are a bit fewer every year. So figuring out how to help colleges and universities get to learners and get to them on their own schedules and give them the tools they need to be successful is the mission of the company. Knowing that so many corporations are also starting to pay for either helping to pay back some of these student loans or pay for somebody obtaining a new degree, uh, as in Walmart's case, where they're trying to help them get a degree in supply chain management. Uh, where do you view an opportunity to perhaps partner with them in the future? Lots. I mean, and, and also to tie back to Hope's question, is this good to, for universities and your question, Brad, as well? Yes, it's a win-win. Uh, what we see now, in, in what we see happening now post-internet, of course, in the last 20 years or so, and going forward in the next 30 or 40 years, people won't finish with just a college degree. People need to be trained and retrained and retrained and need to continue their education. So partnering with business makes a lot of sense. I did that myself when I was a professor. When I launched a global graduate program, mm -hmm. uh, we worked with car companies to make sure that 
uh, the car companies were funding learners to come take the graduate program and then go execute on new technology. So we think a lot of those models would be very important and very beneficial to companies and universities. What are some of the inefficiencies right now in higher education in terms of their expenses and costs? There are several, several key ones. Um, when you look at the rise in tuition, if you look at the university system, the uh, most, most um, uh, seasoned, uh, most honored professionals are faculty, and um, there are a limited number of faculty for the number of students. Faculty also do things that in, in most areas of commercial endeavor would be considered pretty, pretty routine. Computers can take that off their hands. Machine learning can take that off their hands. An algorithm can figure out when a learner is cracking a book and when they're doing better and send a reminder saying, you know, you're doing better when you, when you study in the morning. You might want to take a look at this. And there's a concept of personalized learning right now in some of the, the younger years of, of childhood. A lot of these uh, alt schools that are being opened in San Francisco. Are you envisioning that for universities, kind of like a personalized learning platform uh, at, a, at a level maybe of, of you know, a phoenix or, or something like that? We think that the uh, nonprofit sector is the sector where we can make the most impact and help the most. Um, the nonprofit sector is the sector that awards the greatest number of degrees and actually has a large presence online. Higher education is great because people are adults and can make decisions mm -hmm. about what courses to take, but they need some help with artificial intelligence to get through the system. So we see the nonprofit higher education sector as a huge sector. Higher education alone is a $1.9 trillion industry, and we see ourselves making a mark there. In elementary school, we think a lot of those models will be very important, very helpful. Um, a lot of those models will be governed by municipal governments and partnerships there. This is a hard question to get an answer to in 30 seconds or less, but that's all we have. Um, Elizabeth Warren was walking around here in the floor of the New York Stock Exchange earlier. She's been pounding the pavement in terms of how crippling student loan debt just is. $1.5 trillion on the table right now. One in eight divorces are actually driven from student loan debt. Where do you see a solve to this massive issue? So it's not easily solved by just identifying someone to pay for it because whoever pays for it is not going to like their costs going up by multiples of inflation every year. Something's got to happen to the cost side of the equation. Something has to happen to make college uh, easier to deliver and less expensive to deliver. And the reality is a lot of what we're doing in higher education can be done very well by a computer, leaving faculty and instructors more time to spend quality uh, time with students and, and build relationships. Absolutely. That's probably the best 30-second answer we could have gotten here. So <laughs> thank you so much uh, for the time, and uh, best of luck to you and the team. And marie Sastry, president and CEO of Amosite, joining us here today on Cheddar. Thanks again. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you.